Hello, it's Paul with Logics Magazine. Today we're going to talk about real world projects. All right. And what I mean by that is in the last video, we talked about the letter of understanding for a project, a contract project that I picked up. And um, uh, I want to carry that on to today's conversation. And what I discovered was that the process that the machine had a 501 processor, a slick 501. And if you've ever uh, uploaded a Slick 500 or a, a R Size 500 project, then what you can find out is you don't have the descriptions or, or comments or anything in that project um, on, that's, that's stored on that processor. What I did end up with though is I did end up with a copy of the print. Now one of the one of the real world projects that you're going to run into often is being able to take a project that does not have descriptions and a print and then match the two together get the descriptions and add some comments to your project in the PLC uh, program so that you can determine what's going on now it's great when you have the machine but at minimum you should be able to not be you're gonna not want to let the stress rise up or the fear rise up that you can't do this because in the real world you're gonna have to do it Okay, not every project is going to be a, a 5,000 level project where you have all the descriptions, everything's outlined. A lot of times you're going to run into projects just like this. If you're working with Alan Bradley platforms and you've got to take nothing more than this print and the machine and then uh, add that information into the PLC program from scratch. Now, let's, let's, let me tell you what I was able to do. But... Two things. One, I, I looked at this and wasn't sure when I got this project, when I looked at the program, that I'd be able to get uh, the OEM's copy of the program, which does store all the descriptions and all the information. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do that, and I was uh, concerned that I might have to do just what I'm asking you to do. Take a project, get a print, and then list all of the descriptions um, that need to be in there and um, start building the program almost from scratch, which means you have to go to every sensor and every switch and every um, uh, function on that machine to identify what it's doing and where it's at in the program. A very real world project, okay? Uh, luckily, though, I called the OEM. They had a copy of the, of the program. Now, my challenge doesn't end there. Because what you'll find, and what I found out was, as in real pro programs, you're going to find out projects have a lot of little <laughs> changes. They have all kinds of edit notes and things of that nature uh, that they made changes on the program, uh, on the electrical side, with jumpers and everything else. And a bunch of stuff's not even documented on the electrical print. And then in the PLC program, I found... When I did a compare between the two programs, there was a lot of changes in the PLC side of it as well. So in a real world project, you're going to have to become familiar and comfortable with taking lots of bits and pieces of a, of a project and kind of marry them together in a way that makes the machine run safely and properly. And that's sort of what I've got with this project. Now, what the owner of the machine says, hey, it ran before we took it apart. So in his mind, this thing should run no problem, okay? But they took it apart. They moved it uh, several states. They put it in a pile and it sat for a year. The machine has tons of jumpers and a, and a print, electrical prints that aren't updated. That's our, that does have some notation, but isn't updated. In a PLC program, that's totally not what it was. I, you can't just plug in it, plug and play this machine and just take off. So I, as a real controls engineer, you're going to have to deal with challenges just like this in the real world. And I would like, I encourage you to get practice looking at a machine, not using the print or using the print and um, trying to figure out what's going on without the program and understanding that. When you get it in the real world, you're going to find out that you're going to, your job is like a detective to take all the different pieces, put it together and make something that, that makes sense. And that's very, very challenging. But that's what a real world project 
is like, all right? Now, if it, if it was always easy, they wouldn't need you. And that's the God's honest truth. Your projects are going to be challenging. They're going to be difficult. And this is nothing more than an example of a real world project. One that I'm working on personally right now. Okay, I've hired a guy to help me uh, work through these challenges. And together we're going to um, get the job done. So until next time, um, I hope that this, this has helped you understand some of the challenges you're going to face as a controls engineer with real world projects. So until next time, you guys keep programming, my friends.